Hello everyone! Last time I promised to create a video about cell shading and here it is. Today we will talk about how I created my cell shader and why I did it this way. But first, I'd like to say that everything I know about cell shading came from such YouTube guys like Royal Skies and Raymond Creeps. So a big shout out for them I guess. Ok, I think we are ready to go now. At first, I thought to create my cell shader using post-prods material. It's a very popular method and you can find a lot of tutorials about it, but it has some disadvantages. First, it's not perfect when calculating in real time, so some flickering appears when moving. And second, it does not have a wide range of values, so it's impossible to create procedural highlights. That's why I decided to use a more classic method of material-based shading. When I say material-based shading, I mean that the whole shader is just a material function that can be applied anywhere you want. The core of this method is comparing the light vector with the normal of the vertex. This can be done by taking a dot product of these two vectors. After that, you will get a scalar value between 1 and minus 1. If the value is bigger than shadow depth, the surface is lit, and if it's less or equal, it's in the shadow. We can also add values in between if we want to imitate subsurface scattering. So when the surface is lit, we will use the default color, and when it's dark, we can use the color from shadow tint map, if you have one, of course. We can also use a dot product to add highlights, so when the value is close to 1, you can use a different color. Now let's talk about Fresnel. It's a rather important part in cell shading, but it can be done rather easily. We will just need to take a dot product of the camera vector and vertex normal, and then compare it with Fresnel depth. As a color top line, we can use a mix of default color and white. It's important to hide Fresnel in shaded areas. It's also a common technique to add additional detail using line art and fake ambient occlusion. Both are black and white textures, so we can store them in different channels of one RGB image. We can use these two maps as masks and change color according to them. If it's line art, we should just change the color to something different, and if it's ambient occlusion, we can darker the default color. The tricky part is matching the ambient occlusion color with shadows, or in my case with half shadows. And of course, the ambient occlusion should not be shown in shaded areas. So now we have a cell shader, but it does not take into account shadows from other objects. There aren't many ways of solving this, but the one I stopped on is ray casting. So I do a ray cast from the actor in the opposite direction of light, and if it hits something, that means that the object is in the shadow. If it's not, it's lit up. Based on that, I change the global shadow value in my shader. It's important that if the object is in this kind of shadows, it should not use tint texture for shading, otherwise it will look weird. Next, we have one of the most recognizable things in cell shading. It's outlines. I'm using the most popular technique out there, called inverted hull. So basically, I have another slightly bigger mesh around the main one, but with inverted normals. And that's why it only shows up on the side. There are a lot of tutorials on this, and it's very easy to do with the Blender's Solidify modifier. Just create a new material for outline and check back base scaling, then add the modifier, tweak some values, set flip normals to true, and adjust the material offset. That's it. There are some techniques for cell shading that I did not use. Among them, there is squaring the UV maps, which is rather hard and very time consuming. We can also add different colors to outlines. This I might work on later. And there are a lot of things like this, so we always have some space for improvements. And this is how I created my cell shader for my game Exolian. Hope you find this video helpful or at least entertaining. Now I will continue working on the game and when I have some stuff to show, I will create another devlog video. Ok then, see you next time, bye bye!